Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. It is Tuesday, April 8th, 2014, and I'm Leanne McAdoo. Here's what's coming up tonight. Tonight, Eric Holder's emotional response to a GOP rep. Then, the feds plan to euthanize the same tortoises they used to take up arms against the Nevada family in the name of protection. And the cops may be required to carry surveillance equipment in their car, but they don't have to turn it on. All this and more on the InfoWars Nightly News. Uh, well, I think what we promised to do is to provide you and your staff with... Uh... Sir, I've read you what your department promised, and it is inadequate. And I realize that contempt is not a big deal to our attorney general, but it is important that we have proper oversight. You it, buddy, so, You don't want to go there, okay? I don't want to go there? No. About the contempt? <laughs> Sir, we've been trying to get to the bottom of Fast That's and Furious where about. people died, where at least a couple hundred Mexicans died, and we can't get the information to get to the bottom of that. So I don't need lectures from you about contempt. And I don't need lectures from you either. Because it is very difficult to deal with with asking questions. As a former judge, I'd never have asked questions of someone who's been held in contempt. That was the Attorney General telling Texas Rep. Louis Gomert that he doesn't need any lectures on contempt. That's right, because he already knows all about being in contempt of Congress. Now, Gomert was pointing out that not only has the Justice Department failed to turn over documents about the Holy Land Foundation terror funding trial, Holder was also found in contempt in 2012 for failing to turn over documents related to the fast and furious gun running scandal. And he reiterated that the Justice Department still hasn't handed over those documents. Now, Holder also said today that he, as Attorney General and President Obama, have a vast amount of discretion when it comes to enforcing the laws. Hmm, you don't say. But it was kind of a tough day there for Eric Holder because even... Uh, Representative Steve King went in on him. He was asking him, have you prosecuted anyone in this administration? Because it looks to me that folks on the other side of the aisle are getting extra scrutiny, and those on your side of the aisle are getting no scrutiny. Now, King cited investigations into conservative filmmaker Dinesh D'Souza, Governor Chris Christie, etc., to which Holder replied, I'll put my record up against any other attorney general, any other Justice Department, and any hint we have engaged in anything that's partisan or inappropriate in nature, I totally, 1,000% reject it, he said. Hmm. Let's see. Apparently, Holder has forgotten about his involvement in the AP wiretapping scandal. Or let's take it all the way back to Oklahoma City, where at the time in 2008, he was just uh, Obama's attorney general nominee, while leaked memos revealed that he was involved with the cover-up of the death of Kenneth Michael Trentadu, who was tortured to death by FBI agents after they confused him with one of Timothy McVeigh's accomplices in the Oklahoma City bombing. You don't want to go there, okay? Oh, we're going to go there, because that's what we do here at InfoWars. Now, somebody who might need a little lecture on contempt, Lois Lerner and the House Oversight Committee plans to do the schooling. Now, they plan on voting on a resolution on Thursday to hold the former IRS official in contempt of Congress for refusing to testify before the panel. Lerner has twice invoked her Fifth Amendment right when asked to testify about the agency's targeting of certain nonprofit advocacy groups for extra scrutiny based on their names and policy positions. So just what is this contempt of Congress? Well, any action that directly obstructs Congress's ability to exercise its constitutional powers can arguably count as contempt, such as the case with Eric Holder, who fails to turn over documents. But listen to Congress's options for non-compliant officials. One, Congress can seek a civil judgment from a federal court declaring that the individual is obligated to comply with its subpoena. But due to the time it takes to finalize such a ruling, the current legislative session could expire or the contempt debate could fizzle out before it moves through both the House and the court system. So option one is a bust. Now two, Congress could detain and imprison individuals who do not comply with subpoenas. But this of course has not been done in a very long time. The third option, Congress can seek criminal prosecution against the non-compliant individual. But the Congressional Research Service says that is likely to fail 
because the Justice Department generally declines to prosecute those cases. So this is exactly why Holder isn't concerned about being in contempt of Congress, because he's not going to do an internal investigation and find himself in contempt. This is ridiculous. That's why he's saying he's got a vast amount of discretion when it comes to enforcing the laws. And Lois Lerner, you know, the, they say the Constitution is outdated and needs to be revised, but it seems to be working out splendidly for her. Basically, it looks like it's time for Congress to take the only viable option, grow a pair, and imprison these criminals. Now, meanwhile, while these crooks are just getting away with breaking the laws that are meant to control us and imprison us, the taxpayer, we are continuing to pay the price for keeping them in office. Tax Freedom Day falls three days later this year to April 21st. This is the day when the nation collectively has made enough money to pay its total tax burden for the year. It's three days later due to a slow economic recovery, but this Tax Freedom Day isn't even taking into account federal borrowing, which would actually push the date back until May 6th, and it would be even further back for high tax states. So basically what they're saying is that for the quarter, a quarter of the year, it is literally slave labor. And the government just wants more. They want more, they want to be bigger, and that's what we're seeing in this ongoing battle in Nevada. It's between the uh, cattle rancher, Cliven Bundy, and the Bureau of Land Management. Well now, hundreds of protesters have showed up at the ranch, they've staged a rally against federal authorities there. And Carol Bundy, Bundy's wife, says, we've had enough, we're going to take our land back, we're done. And she added that this is to show that we are not standing alone. People are getting tired of the federal government having unlimited power. Now just to recap, the land dispute is over Bundy's longstanding refusal to acknowledge a 1993 modification to grazing rights on land that Bundy says has been in his family since 1870, well before the BLM ever existed. The Bundy family says the spat represents a showdown between big government and American farmers. Now, the feds say this move is more about enforcing the law and protecting the endangered desert tortoise. But did they forget that just last year it was announced that this is the same desert tortoise that is going to be euthanized by wildlife officials because they say they no longer have the federal funds to protect this threatened species? So they're planning to kill off half of the 1,400 tortoises they have there, but for whatever reason, this is causing the Bundys to not have grazing rights on their land. So this is not about protecting the desert tortoise. This is about Agenda 21. This is about government overstepping its authority, getting too big. Hopefully this particular story will give rise to something bigger in this country. People will actually begin to see that this is a government that is out of control. It's getting too large, out of control, and it doesn't stop there. We got our local law enforcement, cops, getting out of control. And just like Lois Lerner and Eric Holder, who, you know, they don't feel like the laws are meant for them, they're only meant for us, the slaves, the cops have that same attitude. It trickles down into these other places that they have sort of a modicum of authority over the masses. Here, cops are all for mass surveillance when it's for the people, but when the cameras are turned on them, they hate that. An inspection of the LAPD found that officers had tampered with the in-car recording equipment in about half of their patrol cars in an effort to avoid being monitored while on duty. So it was about half of the estimated 80 cars in one South LA patrol division. They were missing antennas. Now these help capture what officers say in the field. And the antennas in at least 10 more cars in nearby divisions had also been removed. The LAPD chief and other top officials had learned of this problem last summer, but they chose not to investigate which officers were responsible. Rather, they just Official, they issued warnings against continued meddling and put checks in place to, you know, check antennas at the start and end of each shift. Now, most of the antennas were remo removed from cars in the Southeast Division, which is where relations between police and minority communities have historically been marred by mistrust, claims of officer abuse. And the in-car video cameras are used as a powerful deterrent to police misconduct. And it's also a tool for 
defending officers against any false accusations. So why would they want to remove the antennas from their cars if these are things put in place to protect them, to protect the public? Clearly, they're not up to any good, but rather than prosecuting them or getting to the bottom of why they would remove these antennas, they just do a little internal investigating and come up with nothing. So here again, this is exactly why we need to stop allowing them to do these internal investigations. They're never going to come up with anything. It's time for us to start being courageous and being active in this world we live in. Now coming up, Eric Holder has even more plans for gun owners. Here he says it's some common sense gun reform. And Darren McBreen takes to the streets to find out if people are ready to be tracked like cattle. That's coming right up. Celebrate the spirit of freedom and liberty upon which our nation was founded at InfoWarsShop.com. Molon Lave is ancient Greek for come and take it. This popular design combines both classic Greek Spartan imagery with modern M16 assault rifles. Now available in women's tees and proudly made in the USA. And now you can protect yourself from corrupt cops with the InfoWars dash cam. It's your car's black box that records all that the driver sees and hears. And introducing the Block It Pocket. It renders your phone undetectable while protecting your private data and your health. Or take back your privacy and protect your personal information by getting your very own Detractor cell phone pouch. So get incredibly high quality freedom-based products and help fund the revolution at InfoWarsShop.com. Introducing Pro One. All of your filtration in one system, portable, on the go. No more do you have two or three filters to just reduce sodium fluoride. You have a system that cuts out the sodium fluoride and up to 95% of hydrofluorosilicic acid. Advanced manufacturing technology combines silver impregnated white ceramic with new Aquamedics advanced media for removal of fluoride and other heavy metals, all in one filter element. It is the only one that does it and out of the gates. We have it discounted at 10% off with promo code WATER. This is the only system that in one unit helps reduce or remove pesticides, herbicides, chloramines, ammonia, and chlorine, hydrofluorosilicic acid, the most common form of fluoride not covered by other fluoride filter brands, and sodium hexafluorosilicate. Get your Pro Pure with a new Pro One filter today at InfoWarsStore.com or by calling 888-253-3139. Well, Attorney General Eric Holder says he wants to explore common sense gun reform, like mandating that gun owners wear bracelets in order to activate their firearms. So just like they're going to be using these smart meters to monitor your homes, or they've already planned on giving passengers smart bracelets in order to fly, that they can turn on and shut down any Al-Qaeda terrorists, um, now they're recommending that you wear these smart bracelets in order to activate your firearm. Isn't it ironic how we were sold the story that the terrorists hate us for our freedoms? But the only terrorists I see that are actually coming after our freedoms are the criminal elements within our own government. And now they want to force us to wear smart bracelets to exercise our God-given rights. But the question is, will the people fall for it once again? <laughs> Attorney General Eric Holder told a House Appropriations Subcommittee that his agency is looking into gun tracking bracelets to be mandatory for all gun owners. One of the technologies that the Department of Justice is looking at is a recent innovation that allows gun owners to only unlock a safe with a fingerprint scan and an RFID-equipped bracelet. Others have even suggested that making G